This is a Foundry Media podcast. Hello, and welcome to this edition of Founders of Fashion podcast. I'm your host, Jennifer Milspa. I'm the founder of Aesthetic Ventures and the Austin Fashion Initiative. On this podcast series, we learn about the amazing entrepreneurs who are building the next generation of fashion brands. Today, we're talking with Beth Zerdecki, Dalton Young, and Jamie Chandley, the executive team behind Rankin Style. What's cool about this team is that they didn't launch Rank and Style, but they certainly are making their mark with a rebrand and the strategy they're using to grow the platform that aggregates the best fashion products on the market. Let's jump into our conversation. Today, we're talking with Beth Zerdecki. Sorry, I always... <laughs> The names, Beth Zerdecki, Dalton Young, and Jamie Chandley, the executive team behind Rank and Style. So first off, so we can learn whose voice is whose, because we have three of you guys in here today. Let's go down the line and have you introduce yourselves. Hi, I'm Dalton Young, and I am the Chief Operating Officer of Rank and Style. Hi, I'm Beth, and I am the Chief Product and Marketing Officer. And I'm Jamie Chanley, and I'm the CEO of Rank and Style. Awesome. All right, so let's start at the beginning. What is Rank and Style? I'll go ahead and take that one. This is Beth. Um, so Rank and Style is a website dedicated to publishing top 10 lists of the best products in the fashion, beauty, and lifestyle categories. Um, and, you know, the main the main takeaway from the business is that we are data driven. So there's no unbiased promotion of products on our site. Awesome. So your story is unique because you guys aren't actually the original founders of Rank and Style. Um, You acquired it, right? Um, So how did how did that come about? How did you guys find the company and and get started in there? So um, we had we had known about the company. Um, We had a friend who was an investor and been following it for the three years since the founding team founded it. Um, and then the founding team was aqua hired, but the platform was available. So we knew there was an opportunity to acquire the business. And, um, Beth and Jamie and I all knew each other and really have complementary strengths and, you know, started talking about how much we love the platform, where we thought it could go, how much opportunity for growth there was with it. And, um, and, and just came together and acquired it. And it was based in New York. We we're all in Austin. So we moved it down to Austin and um, have gone since then. It's been two and a half years and um, lots to learn. It's been great. Awesome. So, okay. So how did that um, go in figuring out who did what in, in launching the company and kind of what each of your areas are focused on? Yeah. So I'll start with that. Um, we... So I have a legal background Mm -hmm. and had run um, a legal business before, like a legal support business. And so it was, it was really obvious that I would um, be doing like the, you know, business organization and all the um, business back end and managing our affiliate relationships. Um, So that was, that was easy for me to take on. And then um, I'll let Beth and Jamie tell you about their backgrounds too. Uh, sure, I'll, I'll jump in here. Um, so I have a fashion merchandising background, um, you know, primarily um, in merchandising for vertically integrated organizations, and then um, later got into uh, site de- development and design, um, and and really kind of managing uh, technology products. Um, so the two of those kind of fed into managing the, the marketing piece and the product of Rankin Style. This is Jamie. I was previously at Facebook. Um, I started here in the Austin office when we launched here. And so, and I managed all of our fashion partnerships there. So it was kind of when the three of us came together, it was a really simple and seamless process of, you know, our backgrounds really align with our three kind of roles, if you will. And so I was focused more on managing, or am focused more on managing our partnerships and social media is one of my strengths. So that's an area that I really dig into as well. Awesome. So did you guys... Uh, obviously, you knew each other before launching the company. Did you uh, work together previously or were you all just friends? No, we had not worked together. We were friends. And um, 
I think we just like, as the idea came up, we were all sort of looking for doing something different. Um, we'd all sort of talked about that and this seemed like a great opportunity. And, and I mean, like we talked about just our strengths that the business needed were complementary, and we each really had that background and that skill set to take on rank and style. So it was, it, it kind of came about in a strangely organic way that it worked out. Okay, cool. So let's get a little bit more into the meat of the product. What about it was attractive to you? And what did you like? What kind of specifically did you like about its potential? I mean, I, I loved and believed in the concept in the first place. Um, the fact that, you know, there, there is a, an overwhelming amount of options for consumers today in the fashion, beauty and lifestyle categories. But there is a limited amount of unbiased information available to the consumer. Um, so, you know, we all know if you're shopping for something, if you really are looking for the best, it can be a pretty overwhelming process reading reviews, um, you know, maybe flipping through the magazines or looking at what your bloggers are, are promoting. You just um, get sucked into this tunnel. Yeah, of, it is. Yeah. It's a little bit of a black hole. <laughs> right. um, and so this platform that existed to really solve that problem um, was really interesting and enticing. And then I think to layer on, um, you know, the, the merchandising aspect and then, um, you know, the the social media and marketing aspect, there's so much opportunity here. This is great. Yeah, I think the founders, they built this amazing foundation for the business. But that's, again, that was what attracted to us to the company is we knew that with our areas of expertise, we could take it to the next level. And so I saw a huge opportunity within marketing channels, like what social media can do for your business in terms of growth, also leveraging just our relationships that we have to strengthen our partnerships with Rink and Style as well. So I think just there are a variety of areas that allowed us to continue to accelerate the growth. Awesome. So what are some of the changes that you guys have made um, in the company and, and, and some of the strategies you've implemented to achieve the growth you're looking for? Um, well, we did recently work through a site redesign. Um, so when we acquired the business, we maintained the original website um, for about a year and a half and then um, worked on a redesign and a rebrand um, to really enhance that user experience. And that's something that we're continuing to grow, test, expand upon. Um, so that was one of the, the first areas, I think, where we we're kind of making some changes Awesome. And um, so your product, it's based on an algorithm. So it it continues. Is it based on a bit more of like a machine learning kind of opportunity where it learns more based on the way people click through? How does the algorithm work? Um, so we, we factor in a few primary um, key areas of data, uh, the number one being user reviews. Uh, so then that has the greatest weight. Um, followed by um, editorial recommendations and bestseller lists, um, both of which you know are um, available data to the consumer. Um, and then lastly, social buzz. So we do pull all of that in. And, and the main thing is we're really just trying to replicate the way a consumer does shop and does do the research, but we're doing it in a, a faster, better process. Okay, cool. So walk me through a bit of that customer journey. Uh, how do they find your site? And, um, you know, what what is their experience like when they get on your site? Um, so I think oftentimes the, con the consumer does find our site because they've Googled something. Um, and I think Google did recently release a report stating that the, the search term best blank is on the rise, which is great for us. Um, that's kind of where we really capitalize on organic traffic. Um, so the, the consumers may be searching something along the lines of best curling wand. Um, and then, you know, hopefully we're at the top of those search results. Um, that's something we work, we work really hard to achieve. Um, they will click through, land on the site and see our top 10 list of the best curling ones. Um, uh, we have 10 presented for them starting at number 10 and scrolling down to the number one product. Um, and from there, there, the consumer has the option to, uh, purchase from a variety of retailers. So we do give them um, options. So if they prefer to shop on Amazon, there's a buy button there. This is buy at Amazon. If they prefer to buy from Nordstrom, um, you know, just to kind of, we give them all the options as far as which retailer to, to shop from. Uh, once they click through, then they do um, ultimately leave our site and go to the retailer site. Okay, yeah. cool. And we do, I'll jump in for a second. We do also have a really um, robust email group and really engaged audience that is um, really looking to us as the number one resource for them. So 
a lot of, you know, a lot of our um, customers are coming back again and again and again through the, that channel as well. Awesome. Um, but none of you, though, are technically technical founders or executives, right? Beth does a really good job. Yeah. I know. It <laughs> sounds like Beth has She's a lot totally of... An engineer. Right. <laughs> I try, I try. I'm not a developer. She's almost. <laughs> yeah. I work very closely with a lot of developers. So, um, and, you know, I think if anything, that's kind of the technical background. But um, we did recently hire um, a CTO, which was a really exciting move for us to have have that individual in-house and, and driving that. So that's been really exciting for Rank and Style. That's awesome. So one of the cool things I think is... is when we talk about you're a fashion tech company, really, and when we talk about the stereotype of any tech company, you think of, sadly, the guy in a hoodie, the, the moody developer in a hoodie sitting there away, coding away on his computer. And you guys obviously definitely don't fit that stereotype. So what has that experience been like for each of you um, as these uh, very stylish, savvy women developing a company, uh, really a tech company in this space? I mean, I think overall we feel really supported. I think we're super lucky to be in a city like Austin where there are you know, so many startups that get a ton of support. I mean, sure, we are obviously the minority here when it comes to females in this space. However, I mean, I think we're at an advantage because we can find amazing talent here. Yeah. Um, you know, our CTO is male, so he is our first male hire on our team. Um, but other than that, I think that overall I certainly feel like we're supported. Awesome. Um, and so kind of what are the, some of the things that you're doing to market your brand? And um, are you using paid channels or is it mostly all organic? Um, you talked a little bit about that word of mouth. Are you looking to have people have um, a brand attachment to the brand rank and style? Or is it more of I'm looking for the best T-shirt? That's how. Yeah. So we, um, you know, like I mentioned before, we do work really hard at um you know, earning that number one spot in um, Google search results. That's really important to us. Um, but we do also work really hard to acquire email users. Um, you know, it's surprising, but they are some of our strongest users. And um, we have a variety of ways that we uh, work to achieve that. We do a little bit of paid. Um, and, you know, actually, Facebook has been our best platform for that. We've tested a variety of, of paid strategies, and that's the one that, that keeps winning. So ultimately, they're getting most of our money when it comes to the marketing budget um, yeah. because we see that return on investment. Yeah. So and I feel like that's just an area that's going to keep growing in a, in a different way or changing as people move more over to things like Instagram or, you know, the next social media channel that the I guess the kids are using. Certainly. And we definitely, <laughs> across social channels, tailor our voice, right, for who our customer is on that channel. So Instagram stories will feel a little bit different than, say, our Facebook post on an or from an organic standpoint because it's just different readers or users that are consuming that content there. Mm -hmm. And who is your target consumer? Is it mostly female? Is it anybody? How, are, how do you kind of tailor your lists and, and what you're doing to attract who you're looking to attract? It's almost a two point, two part question there. Um, well, we do. We kind of have a wide range of as far as our target demographic. Um, you know, initially when we acquired the business, it was it was female product oriented only, um, and we really kind of said it was the busy the busy shopper. So I mean, anyone from the age of eighteen up to you know sixty five plus, um, and it's someone that is strapped for time but is looking to purchase something. Um, we've added on the vertical, the men's vertical. Um, so we are targeting that category as well. Um, and, and right now, you know, we're really growing again in the, in the organic vein, um, which is great. Guys are searching for something and they want a quick and easy way to find it. And we have that for them. Um, but it is, it's just, you know, really the, the consumer that's looking to find the best and the quickest, fastest way, which is a lot of people out there. That's yeah. awesome. So how do you do like your list ever? Let's well, let's talk a little bit more about the list. Like what what are some of the things that you are creating lists around and um, some of the things that are, I guess, the most fun or exciting or just that were su most surprising for you? And how do you keep coming up with those ideas? <laughs> you know, it's funny when we acquired the business, um, that was something that we did briefly talk about was, will we ever run out of ideas for lists? And is that like something we need to be concerned about in this acquisition? And um, 
we can tell you that there is never a um, lack of ideas. It's always regenerating. I mean, the way that primarily fashion moves, you know, there's just always so much that's new and interesting happening and um, that our audience is always interested in. You know, we're, we're constantly updating our basics list that are sort of evergreen and we want to make sure that the products are always available on those lists. Um, and then we're always, we're, you know, want to be sure that our audience has an opportunity to see the trends too. And, um, focused on seasonal always, I mean, doing those kind of fun lists, but, um, anyway, I don't know if you want to jump in more, but that's, you know, there, there's never a lack of ideas there. Yeah, I mean, that's the beauty of fashion and beauty. I mean, <laughs> right. they're always evolving and creating new products. And so there's there's always more lists for us to generate. So, um, but we also do dig into data as well. And, and we see what people are, are Googling, what are they looking for? And that will drive a top 10 list, as well as what are people shopping? Um, every now and then we'll kind of do a shopping roundup list. Um, and it's interesting to see what the consumer is converting on there and okay, well, actually everyone is interested in the puff sleeve sweater. Let's go ahead and do a list of just that, that specific like product. The best top 10 puff sleeve right. sweater. Exactly. So, yeah. But it was interesting to me and it still is that basics always win. Like our reader loves the basics. Yeah. Like black leggings, strapless bras, white like, t-shirts. Yeah, exactly. Like you need, you know, and I think when you're shot for time, you want to have the basics in your closet that are the best. Yeah. And so I think we, so do your your lists eventually expire, like something from a couple of years ago? Obviously, some of those products aren't available anymore. So you have to figure out the new the new stuff that comes on. But that all kind of feeds up naturally through the algorithm that essentially kind of how does that technical bit of it work? Is it crawling websites to understand what products are out there automatically? So you kind of have a feed or... So there, there isn't actually a feed in that sense where it's kind of an overall trend that hangs us yeah. um, and says everyone's buying this type of blouse. We have to go in and, and, and say puff sleeve sweaters, and then it pulls okay. from that. Yeah. Cool. All right. Um, and earlier, Jamie, you mentioned being located in Austin. So I wanted to jump in and talk about what that experience is like um, for you a bit more in depth of being a company located in Austin and being a fashion company. So many people I've talked to since um, I've reloc relocated back here is that, oh, you need to be in New York, you need to be in LA, you need to be in San Francisco. But, you know, Austin itself has its own unique resources and, and kind of environment and culture. So what is, what is that experience? Yeah, what do you like about it? Two things. I think actually when we were acquired the business and it was in New York city, we were probably all a little bit concerned, like we're going to be in Austin. Are we not going to be able to meet with all of our partners? And I think just this day and age, that's just not how people are doing business anymore. I mean, things aren't necessarily all done face to face meeting with your partners, right? So we have strong relationships with them. We just develop those in different ways. And I think being in Austin, um, one of the biggest things is just growing our team. And we have, you know, the most talented, inspiring team that we can have that we've built here. Um, because these folks are local and they're ready to work and they're energized and they're also in a great place. So it's, it's been, I think being here is, has been wonderful for our business for sure. Awesome. So what inspires you kind of in, in the development of your business and your brand and where you want to take it? I could say like what inspires me, I was thinking about this actually is I keep going back to our team, but they just are such hard workers and they're always forward thinking. They're always coming up with new ideas. So I know that that's how we'll constantly continue to improve our product. Right. And then I think secondly, our readers, like they're super engaged. Like I am constantly checking. We have an info at address that you can write in and request lists or comment or complain or whatever it is that's on your mind. And it's amazing to me how engaged these readers are. Some are new, some are old, some know this forever. And they're constantly asking for more lists. They want specific content, um, especially when we went through our redesign, as Beth was mentioning. Um, you know, it, it was amazing, but it was also really wonderful to have the feedback that we have um, from our audience. Awesome. So kind of um, like, let's talk about a little bit about how the company has evolved and grown. Um, when you started, it was obviously, I guess, just the three of you. Um, and then what was that journey like and and to get to where you are now? How, how many people are on your team now? 
So we have a team of 10 now. Um, we're always lucky also to have at least one um, really awesome merchandising intern from UT, usually with the semester. Um, and so that's been great. So um, yes, when we started, it was the three of us uh, working out of Beth's um, like kitchen table which was great. Yeah. Those were the good old days. Um, those were the good old days. <laughs> and we quickly realized that we had to make an addition to the our content team um, and were able to hire, I think, the first person that we interviewed. And, and she has really risen up the ranks and is now managing like the most of the content team. Um, and we have a lot of our writers are freelance, so they're not in office. But um Otherwise, I mean, it's just, we, we just have sort of hit these points where we're like, we have to make an additional hire. Um, and, you know, it, I think probably most entrepreneurs and people with businesses feel this way is like, for us, it has been pretty glaring where the resources need to go mm -hmm. at the time. So um, we've been able to make some really strategic hires that have helped us grow the business, like unbelievably. Awesome. I think too, what, like to Dalton and Beth's credit too, is that we've stayed really lean and we're really thoughtful about our hires. You know, it took us a long time to find the right CTO. And it was something that I know Beth was super cautious about and thoughtful to make sure. I mean, it was such a key hire for us that as we continue to expand, we have to make sure we're getting the right people on our team. I mean, culture is so important, especially I think about being in Austin when you have all of these startups that, you know, culture is important for everyone. Like you're kind of competing with everyone else. And so you right. Wanna, Who has the best yeah, culture? You want to make sure that, you know, no, we're not Facebook. We're not providing like massage therapists every day, right. free food, <laughs> but it's still a great place to work. Yeah. <laughs> right. Exactly. Well, and sometimes you end up, everybody ends up staying there all day long and you're like, go have a life. Right. Like totally. you want, yeah. you want your, I know I want my team to be able to have a life. So, um, so yeah. So like, what's the kind of the vision for the future? What's next for you guys? Well, right now, you know, we're really kind of just focusing heavily on enhancing rank and style the website, making sure that it is the best platform for the user to find what they're looking for in the in the best and fastest way possible. Um, we are considering an app um, down the line, and you know, when we when we talk about an app, um, you know, it will just be another another way for our users to really access our information in, in a faster, easier way. Um, so it's just right there on your phone. You're not even having to go through a browser um, to, to access our, our data. And um, let's see, what has been one of the biggest challenges that you've had? Well, we're constantly challenged with the changing algorithms with all social media and Google's organic search. Um and, and we're not alone in that, but it is... You have to be a bit reactionary to that. You have to be yeah. nimble. Yeah. Um, you have to be able to be reactionary. You have to be quick. You have to be able to adjust um, and make sure that your content is aligned with, you know, those algorithms as, as much as possible while providing, like we, we always are going to provide a content and that is, is true to rank and style, but, um, yeah, you, you really have to stay on your feet with those and, and everybody in the space feels it the same way, but it is, um, in, in the years that we've been in this space, I mean, it's probably those algorithms have changed countless times already. And there isn't a manual. So right. if Pinterest yeah. shifts an algorithm, like we now have to start figuring out on our own, like how do we overcome this and get our traffic back up in that channel? So it's real fun. And you, def and you kind of rely on all these different channels. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. So, okay. So before I ask my last question, fill me in on um, where people can find you and how people can get involved in what you're doing. Well, yeah, you can go to rankandstyle.com, visit our site, um, and also follow us on all of our social channels. Um, rank and Style. Our handle's at Rank and Style, or uh, just Rank and Style on Facebook as well. But if you go to our website, you can also sign up to receive our newsletter, and that's the best way to stay in touch with us, because we'll... Because you send in those yeah. top 10 lists of yeah. all those brilliant new ideas. Yeah. All right. So um, what is... Last question. What is... Um, some of the, what is one thing that you've learned um, about running your business that has surprised you? I mean, it I, it's different every single day. I mean, that has, you know, you we sat down a few years ago and thought that we would like kind of have a roadmap of where the business would go. And I think in a lot of ways, we've surpassed what we thought we'd be. And then, you know, we continue to look at like, well, now we see there's so much more we can do. 
Um, and every day, you know, at, weekly we sit when we have our meetings and and have brand new ideas. And it's exciting. It's constantly changing. But you also feel like you can never work fast enough or right. catch up with, with all of your ideas. <laughs> You're always like, okay, let's get it done. Yeah. Yes. All right. Well, thank you guys for joining me for this edition. And thank you everybody for listening. Sometimes the great idea you build isn't the one you invent, but the one you discover. It all begins with staying open to new ideas. Thank you for listening to our Founders of Fashion podcast. Don't forget to subscribe wherever you get your podcasts. If you're watching this podcast on YouTube, be sure to subscribe to this channel and click that notification bell for new episode alerts. Founders of Fashion is produced by Mariah Gossett and myself. Audio and video production by Jake Wallace. And also a huge thank you to the rest of the team at Founding Media who make this podcast possible. Also, a quick note, if you have been enjoying this show, I wanted to recommend another Founding Media podcast, Great Society, hosted by Constance Dykusen. The podcast is a series of conversations with inspiring individuals, companies, and brands that are working to do good things in the world. If you want to check it out, see the link in the show notes. I'm your host, Jennifer Millspa, to learn more about my work at the intersection of fashion, internationalization, and entrepreneurship, visit aesthetic.ventures.